George Santos has left the house, but apparently not the public arena. The point starts right now. He's now former Congressman George Santos, the sixth person ever expelled from the House of Representatives. So here we are. It's a week since it happened. How do you feel about that? You know, Marsha, the emotions are always up and down, and, and you go through the highs and lows, the historic value of this, and it's still slowly settling in. That I, I feel like that last week was just not real. It was out of a movie, but I'm okay. I mean, do you feel regret? Do you feel ashamed? Do you feel afraid of the future? I mean, what, what's going on in your head? So I'm not ashamed of the work I did in the House of Representatives. I feel like everything I stood for, I'm so proud of the legacy I leave behind, even with the short 11-month term that I served. I feel like every vote I took, I can stand by and I can defend, and I'm proud of that. Um, regrets? Uh, regrets, plenty. Like, there's always regrets, right? Um, regrets of people that I got involved with throughout the campaign, people that put me in a bad position and obviously now I have a long road of redemption ahead and I'm going to work really hard for that. What does redemption look like? Redemption means really acknowledging every mistake that's been made and just really going through the process of, of putting your head down and accepting it and rebuilding a reputation and trust and, and that's that's important. Do you think you can do that? I think so. I think America is a very forgiving country and uh, I'm going to work hard for that forgiveness. So do you think that getting expelled was inevitable? I don't know. I didn't think it was going to happen. I didn't have expectations. But I didn't think that my colleagues would have the, the courage or chutzpah to go ahead and create new precedent, because that's what they did. I joined the ranks of uh, Confederate generals now. But, but the thing is, that's not exactly a badge of honor, or maybe you think it is. I mean, how do you look at it? I look at it as a badge of honor in the sense of these guys decided to take me and strip me of my due process and expel me. This, this, this was the So what you're upset outcome. about is that they expelled you before you were convicted? They expelled me before I was given an opportunity to defend myself. So when you took the oath of office, you already knew that um, reporters were reporting that there were mistakes or uh, falsehoods or untruths in your resume. So did you think that you could get away with it? Did you think that um, you could serve anyway? Not, not, not get away with it, but it's, it's what I did throughout this term is I tried to redeem myself and I did it by doing good work. I was out there, I was doing the work. Look, I left Congress and I can tell you with, you know, both feet on the ground, before I left, we were able to submit our nominations for military academies and I got six kids into schools. They're going to continue the process because the process goes on even with me left because the nomination was made. I can tell you there are colleagues of mine that are, were scrambling just last week before I was expelled to submit nominations. So we did the work. Uh, so, so that's where I, I thought that I could, you know, really counter everything that I had had shortcomings with, with just putting really good work forward. But you also had trouble getting people to support your bills. I mean, one of the things that you wanted to do was SALT, and you weren't able to get that done, but neither were any of No one else was, and no one else is going to get SALT done, because SALT is a political uh, a hot potato that nobody has the backbone or fortitude to actually put forward, unfortunately. So I've always wondered about one thing. You know, did you write the resume yourself? No. No? No. <laughs> you no. never wrote it yourself? I didn't write the resume. I didn't write the bio. Um, this, this, those were all put together by a former campaign staffer. Really? Yes. Because the thing that struck, struck me when I read all the things was that it was very carefully calculated to uh, appeal to almost every kind of voter in, your, in the district. Is, was that the goal? I, I guess it was. I mean, I, I don't know. I can say that I didn't write the bio, I didn't write the resume. So when you read the bio and you read the resume... I wasn't comfortable with it. There's, I have plenty of emails pushing back that I didn't feel comfortable or attached to that bio. But they told you this is how you get elected? This is how we move forward. I'm actually astonished. Yeah, I have the emails. But of course, in the, end, in the essence of justice, I need to wait a, a few months before we can get to that stuff. But yeah, that, that's pretty much so there. 
You know, but it, as we're sitting here, there are common cause and some um, politicians, uh, Senator John Liu, they're actually having a press conference outside your former office to say that there should be new laws um, that would strengthen candidate disclosure laws. How do you feel about that? I think that's fantastic. I think that's fantastic, and it would hold Senator John Liu to a higher standard, especially after his uh, embroilment with corruption here in New York City when he was comptroller. So I think if he would adhere to that standard, he wouldn't be a sitting senator today. Yeah, but it, is this something that will go down on your resume, that he was the reason why New York strengthened their disclosure laws for candidates? Would love it. I think that would be a badge of honor. Would that have prevented you from doing what you did? Well, and I'll tell you this, it would be a badge of honor because we need to seed out corruption in public office. Just look around us. There's a lot of corruption going around us here in New York. Long Island is a corruption cesspool. I know that there's a mirage that everything goes well and works well, but it, behind closed doors, it is just so corrupt, it's disturbing. But some people would say this is like the pot calling the kettle black because, you know, you you were accused of lying on a whole bunch of things. I saw how the sausage is made and I have receipts and I'm willing to show the American people. You don't need to believe me. Believe the proof and the evidence. And when are you going to give us that proof? Oh, I'll be putting it all out soon. So on, I'll give it I'll give a lot to you. I promise. Um, <laughs> on December 4th, you posted on X, which is the former Twitter, quote, the truth will set me free. And it will. What did you mean by that? Just. From now on, as painful as it is, doesn't matter who it's going to hurt, I think the truth is the only, the only acceptable path forward. Don't, don't omit, don't lie, don't embellish. It's the plain truth. And that's an oath I take to myself moving forward just to make sure that we're just, I'm moving in a direction where we will be as transparent and I'm sorry if it hurts sometimes. So do you think that people will believe you? Having every, giving everything else that's happened, will people believe you? I'll, I'll build trust. That's the goal is to rebuild trust with the American public and with all my, all the people who voted for me. So you keep talking about, about corruption. So after you left office, um, you vowed to file ethics complaints against a number of Congress people from the New York metropolitan area. Um, Mike Lawler, Nicole Maliotakis, Nick LaLota, and of course Rob Menendez from New Jersey. Why and have you? Well, I mean, Nicole Malia stock tips, as I call her now, I mean, she's insider trading, and it's almost evident if you look at her disclosures. I mean, it, it's not hard to see a so member. How do we prove that? Oh, it's very easy. She receives classified briefings as a member of the Ways and Means Committee. It takes a very comp competent DOJ, uh, pardon me, FBI officer to go look at her trading and how it works and just look at her communication. It, this is all digitized these days. It's not hard to see a person saying, hey, do this trade just got a good tip she's pushed back on that though yeah well they all push back but can somebody explain to me how is it that she miraculously becomes a member of the committee and then she's doing trades on nycb with the signature bank collapse just the day before having an 80 percent stock hike that's not a lucky trade marcia that's a very well informed trade so Mike Lawler tells me the charges you made against him are completely false. No, they're not false either. If you go on the FEC and you look at Checkmate Strategies, which is one of the, the consulting firms who received the bulk of his campaign funds last cycle, he is a stakeholder, a third stakeholder in the company, which means campaign donors donate to his campaign, he hires his own firm, pays his own firm to do the services, and the money cycles back into his pocket. So did you ever file ethics complaint against, complaints against any of these people, or it, are you planning there, on doing it? There, uh, they're just a form that you can submit in the Office of Congressional Ethics. Any American can do it. Have you I, done I received, it? I started penning them all up. I got caught up with everything else. I will be submitting them most likely tomorrow. It was supposed to be Monday. I, I did, didn't follow up on it. I got caught up with a whole lot of stuff. I think everybody has seen. I've been a little busy, but that it's all filled out. It's, it just needs to be Are submitted. Are you doing this to get revenge or because you were, you were uh, astonished by what you saw in Congress? Hypocrisy needs to be called out. So if I was expelled for accusations, I think members should actually be investigated. If we were to hold every member to the same standard they held me, we'd have no Congress left. You'd have a very small Congress. Okay, well, it's time for a break, but we'll be right back with a lot more from George Santos. We're back with former Congressman George Santos, who within four seconds of leaving office has found a new career on Cameo. What is that about? 
Look, you know, it's funny. Uh, the idea came from a former Kevin McCarthy staffer. He reached out and says, George, you have such a large personality. The people love you. You should just open a cameo. I'm like, what's a cameo? So I looked into it. I'm like, oh, that's what that's called. The videos where people send you birthday wishes. I opened it. And so I guess. So I think we need to let our viewers see what cameo sure. really is. <laughs> so I'm going to have, we're going to play some of your cameo appearances right now. Chris, you sick psycho. You want me to yell at you? Are you out of your mind? Have you not seen me lose my mind enough this year? I want to congratulate you on this milestone of seven years sober. That's amazing. Look, you're an icon. You're a diva. Keep it up. Keep trying hard. And I'm pretty sure you're going to kill it in your performance. Bye, Adam. Break a leg. I love that you are such a dedicated student at NYU. You know, um, <laughs> my not so real MBA. So you have a sort of deprecating humor, but the thing that's amazing about this is that you started out charging, what, $75? For the first 10, yeah. And then it's now 500 Yes. <laughs> How much money have you made? And are you going to surpass the amount of money you could have made in Congress in a whole year? I can tell you that by the end of this week, that is actually factual. I will have, re I will have made more money in um, seven days than I would have made an entire year in Congress. So we have to tell our viewers that the congressional salary was $174,000 a year. Yes. So you're saying that in a week you will make that salary yes ma'am I guess you have a lot of legal bills to pay <laughs> <laughs> that's very true so look do you know what's the interesting part the self-deprecating humor obviously I I don't mind roasting myself but if you look and understand the back end I'm reading a script probably 90% of the time and ad-libbing 10% of the time so is there any request that you wouldn't accept I've de declined many Many. There because? were some very vile Jewish, Israel, pro Hamas stuff, or people saying, like, hey, can you send a message to my friend bin Laden? Uh, he's still really much alive, even though you all, like, uh, just no, I don't go there. So you're facing very serious federal charges. Yes, I am. Um, stealing people's identities, using donor credit cards. You pled not guilty. Yes, ma'am. Are you going to try to work a plea deal or are you going to go to trial? Look, um, in, in the essence of everything going on, uh, a plea is not off the table, obviously, at this point. But we just don't know that yet, right? Um, well, the trial's it, not until September. The trial's not until September, and a plea is not off the table. So uh, there's obviously conversations taking place, especially after what happened in Congress, and we'll see. Are you afraid of going to jail? I think everybody should be afraid of going to jail. It's not a pretty place, and uh, I definitely want to work very hard to avoid that as best as possible. So what do you think you can offer the feds to prevent yourself from going to jail? I have no idea, Marsha. You're getting emotional. No, it's, 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 I have no idea what I can do. It's, it's, I'm going to negotiate the best I can. And like, what what will that? Do you have any idea what that what they're going to look for? I mean, community service. Uh, uh, I mean, if that's what they're offering, I'll do it. Uh, you know, happily. But again, I don't know if that's the case. Um, the reality is, I it's the unknown. It's the great unknown. Do you think that you would have had a better chance of getting a plea deal had you negotiated it before the expulsion? If you had used that, the you know leaving Congress beforehand that would have given you a better option in terms of getting the federal government to give you a plea? Well, pundits say that. I don't know. That's true. Uh, I think that the DOJ has a lot of integrity, at least in the Eastern District. They've showed a lot of integrity and grace and how they do things. And I think we've gone past that old uh, mentality that people would sacrifice seats for slap on the wrists. So that's just my gut feeling speaking. Uh, I will say this, the DOJ has given me a far better treatment than the Ethics Committee in Congress has, an honorable one and one with integrity, which the Ethics Committee lacked integrity. So on X, you said, and I quote, my community service will be to clean up Congress of its corrupt frauds in a bipartisan way. My road to redemption will be serving the American people. What's your road to redemption? I'm 
if I can weed out corruption out of Congress, I think that is the best way you can serve the American people. So we can get Congress to actually go back to working for the American people, because right now it's full of people working for self-interest. Just take a look, for example, at what's going on just this past week. The amount of people retiring before their time or people resigning with knowing what's going to happen with the Republican majority. And corruption exists in both parties. So you went to Washington. You got an inside look at, as you said, how the sausage is made. Did that make you want to continue to serve? It makes me want to go back one day to change it, to expose it further. I think ex exposing the rot is the only way that you change. And I think more people need to run for office with that same mentality to go buck the corruption of the handshakes and how appropriations are done and, and how people get money for their districts. It's all based on corruption. It's a corrupt environment and system. So I, if I were to ever run again and go back to Washington, D.C., it would only be to continue weeding out all of that malfeasance that hurts the taxpayer at the end of the day. Do you think that's actually a real goal for yourself after all that's happened? It can always be. I, I, I can't say yes or no, but I can tell you that I can always try. So what would you say to the people in whatever district you run, you know, vote for me because I've learned my lesson? No. Vote for me, give me a second chance, and look at the record I left when I, when I was there for only 11 months. Uh, I'm 35 years old, Marsha. I have a long road ahead of me, so we're talking probably 10 years into the future, at least. So, so is that means 10 years you're going to spend some time in jail? Or no, I'm just saying 10 years before I, years yeah, before. to, to, to want to even get back on this game. So let me ask you this question. What was the thing that most surprised you when you went to Washington and you found out how things were done? How the sausage was made in your words. Well, essentially, when I saw lobbyists going into congressional offices and then leaving with the member of Congress to go out for drinks and dinner, and then I see appropriations get appropriated for those those verticals the very next week uh, during earmarks and as they're getting awarded, I'm like, those aren't community projects. Those are lobbyist projects. That's how the American people is being sold down a river. Did you try telling people that? I did. I did. They must have not The reporters you. didn't care in D.C. But what They're about numb. the elected, the people you had to work with? Did you ever go to people in power and say, of course. this is not right? Of course. And I was told to shut up. And do you think maybe that played a role in their desire to expel you? I don't you? know. Look, there's, there's conspiracies all over. People say that I, was ex that I was expelled because McCarthy made a play to weaken Johnson. Is that true? I don't know. But that's a, that's a rumor in D.C. right now because he knew he was going to resign. And that, I, like, I, I've never had a bad relationship with the former speaker. And I adore the current speaker. So I don't want that to be true. But that's a rumor. So there's a lot of rumors in D.C. The one thing I can tell you is every time I tried to raise red flags on bad behavior and on bad acts, I was told to shut up. And how did you feel about that? Very pissed off. So one last question, Matt Gates is going to, there's an ethics investigation into him too. He was one of your supporters. How do you feel that should end up? I think that they're going to weaponize the ethics process and they're going to use a precedent they created with me and unsee a duly elected member of Congress without a single conviction on charges that the DOJ passed up and saying that there was no there there. So you say they shouldn't expel anybody else? It's, it's all retribution. Except for, except for Jamal Bowman, who you won't have expelled. Well, but hold on. But Jamal Bowman admitted to a crime, and then he got a slap on the wrist. Remember, there's 140 people sitting in a D.C. We're going to have to leave it here for oh. now, though, but we have another section. We'll have to leave it right there for now. But our conversation continues with George Santos right after the show on our streaming channel, CBS News New York.